Good morning. And I welcome you all to worship this morning as we celebrate uh, with our confirmation students on this affirmation of baptism, as well as Reformation Sunday, uh, one that uh, is mostly common in Lutheran churches, but several other branches of the church as well celebrate Reformation Sunday. I would like to just highlight a few of the announcements that you probably already read at least once. Today's radio broadcast and bulletins are sponsored in memory of Myron Halverson uh, on his birthday by his family. Um, today's flowers are sponsored by Rich and Gail Smith in honor of Nolan's confirmation. A uh, voters assembly meeting will be held on Sunday, November 13th, immediately following the worship service. We need to have a quorum for that. It shouldn't last long. It's uh, all printed out, and so you'll get a chance uh, to do some voting on our budget as well as new officers. Uh, we need 500 food items to receive $500 from Thrivent. We've been collecting food items, any food item, into the uh, grocery cart that's in the Narthex, so please be sure to bring those to church. Uh, Kiwanis Gifts for Kids program begins November 1st and gifts for uh, the country, or the county kids applications are in the table by the office so that if you know some children who are in need of some help for Christmas, you can just fill this out and we'll get it to the Kiwanis to make sure. Also, we've been trying to put together a pictorial directory that's been working hard on that and I know it's, a lot of people say I don't, I don't like pictures of myself. I don't like pictures of myself but I have to do it. So we would invite you to make this a success, uh, this pictorial directory. We've added another day, so it's Wednesday through Saturday, the first part of November, to make an appointment. We even have an opportunity today, if you just don't want to fuss with it, go into the library right after church this morning or after coffee, and they'll take a, just take a photo of you right in there. That uh, probably w would cost you no more than a couple of minutes. So we would like to make that pictorial directory a success, especially as we're going to have a new pastor uh, who really relies on those things uh, when they're new to the area. Let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. I invite you to please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And together we pray the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 46 responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. 
Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes a knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 8. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We're descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be made free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We'll invite the children forward for the children's message. story I just read to you about Jesus, Jesus said some very important things. He said, if you follow his commands, you will be free. Do you feel free today? Do you? Or or maybe, I mean, maybe we're not, uh, uh, I've never been a slave. Have you been a slave? No, I haven't either. Have you been a slave? I haven't either there. So what does Jesus mean when he says, if you follow my commandments, I will make you free? What do you think? I'll tell you, because this is Reformation Sunday and this is part of our Reformation celebration. Jesus makes us free from sin. Jesus makes us free from death. Instead of just dying and it being over, we, we go to heaven, right? And Jesus also frees us from the mastery, our master, the devil. Who is now our master? Jesus. Jesus is our master, right? And we, and we want to know what to do with our lives and how to act. We look to Jesus. So are we slaves? Not with Jesus. Do we still sin? Yeah, I guess we do. We still need Jesus to forgive us and that's what we just did a little while ago in church so we do that every day don't we so today we celebrate our freedom freedom from sin death 
and the devil. Okay, let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these uh, young people. Be in their hearts and their minds. May they celebrate all that Jesus has done for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Grace and peace be among you for now and always. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. We enjoy and are greatly benefited by our freedom in Christ as I try to share with the little guys. Freedom from sin's condemnation. You might remember this from confirmation. Freedom from sin's condemnation. Freedom from death's harsh sting. And freedom from our old master, the devil. We are free, free in Christ to live in peace with God. Yet as we all know, when freedom, there always comes responsibility, right? I mean, we get a lot of freedom. What comes with that is responsibility. Like most teenagers, I look forward to my 16th birthday as a day of great liberation in my life, right? And maybe for you too. True, unfettered freedom. Being 16 meant that I could turn in my workers' driver's permit into a full-time driver's license that I could use any time, day or night, close or far. I had just a taste for driving as I was allowed only to drive the daylight hours and, and to my job only when South Dakota when you were 15. I even managed to scrape together the large sum of $100 for my first car. I bought my first car, a bright red 1964 Rambler. It was a wonderful car. It didn't run very well. The transmission would slip out and then slip back in and burn the tires a little bit every time, but hey, you know, can't be perfect. Every dent, every scratch, every rusty hole in there was mine. Mine, mine, mine. True symbol of freedom. A kind of statue of liberty right there in my driveway. I remember so very well when I was about to turn 16 and I had that sweet taste of freedom in my tongue and eagerly anticipated the day when I would enjoy the true freedom of full-time driver's license. The open road of self-determination would be mine for the taking. I thought it would be my own personal, no longer depending on mom's rides in the old brown Pontiac. Pontiac that would kind of ping and sputter when it sounding like maybe it ran on vegetable soup rather than gas. No more sitting in the back seat, kind of lowering myself down as mom would drop me off to my, my affairs. And I didn't want my friends to see me being driven there by my mom. So then my 16th birthday came. It was my independent day. It was my Bastille day. It was true liberation for me and my life, and my whole life was going to just change amazingly. Yet one day while driving with my mom and my brothers, we rounded a curve and we were all startled by flashing lights approaching us at a high rate of speed. Police vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks blurred past as we slowed and pulled to the side of the road like we were supposed to. I couldn't remember seeing so many emergency vehicles all at the same time, all heading in the same direction ever before. I remember the look on my mother's face as she sadly stared at the passing vehicles and then she did something strange that she had never done before. She looked me straight in the eyes and didn't say a word. 
it was uncomfortable. The look she gave me, like the kind you give a person when they're leaving for a long trip. I knew what she was thinking. She didn't have to say a word. I understood perfectly. Well, the emergency vehicles passed, and as we continued on our way, the next day we read in the paper what all the commotion was about. Two teenagers, 17 years old, had been on a joyride out by the lake. It seemed one who was actually the brother of my classmate had just gotten a new motorcycle and the two teenagers went out together to enjoy a ride around the, the lake. Apparently neither in the vehicle noticed the other until it was too late. There wasn't even a skid mark noticed on the pavement. The two boys hit the truck at cruising speed, broadside. A motorcycle slammed against a big truck, doesn't really stand a chance. They were both killed instantly. There was nothing anyone could do. The driver of the truck was okay, uh, but then, as you can imagine, he probably was never okay. So needless to say, my enthusiasm for getting my driver's license suffered a severe blow that day. The realization came to me that the worst sort of way that I freedom I'd longed for with all of its independence and all of its personal privileges was only half of what a serious responsibility that was to be. The open road to freedom was also the narrow path of responsibility and obligation. But that's always the way it is, isn't it? It's like a coin. The flip side of freedom is responsibility. The other side of in independence is obligation. One goes with the other, doesn't it? That seems to be the truth with so many things in our life. Along with our freedom comes responsibility. And so now we get to the part where you knew I had to talk about some about Jesus, so I will. It's the very time of every experience, freedom in Jesus Christ, freedom from condemnation and sin. That's what we celebrate every Sunday, but especially on Reformation Sunday. We are free from the condemnation of sin. We are free. We are free from the condemnation of sin. We live our lives in obedience to God. The Bible never says, well, this freedom is for you to just do it any way you want to. It's for doing God's way. The goal is always to do it God's way because God's way always leads to life and wholeness and health. You know, we want freedom, we want independence. Just turn on the television and how many times do you hear that word, freedom, independence? Yet we bring enough to understand that freedom without responsibility and independence without obligation is merely reckless and is often destructive. Freedom without responsibility is like driving with your eyes closed. Now we live in a relatively free society. We enjoy a great deal of independence this day, yet also think of what difficult times we now live in. Think of all the inconsistencies in the world. As one writer put it, the paradox of our time is in history is that we have taller buildings but shorter tempers, wider freeways but narrower viewpoints. We spend more, but we have less. We buy more, we enjoy it less. We have bigger houses and smaller families, more conveniences, but less time. We have more degrees, but less sense, more knowledge, but less judgment, more experts, but more problems, more medicine, but less wellness. We have multiplied our possessions, but reduced our values. We have talked too much, we love too seldom, 
we hate too often. We learned how to make a living, but we've forgotten how to make a life. We've added years to our life, but not life to our years. We've been all the way to the moon and back, but have trouble crossing the street just to say hello to the neighbor. We split the atom, but not our prejudices. We have higher incomes, but lower morals. We have become long on quantity and short on quality. These are the times of tall people, but short character, steep profits, shallow relationships, more leisure, but less fun, and more kinds of food, but less nutrition. And this is what Jesus means when he says, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Jesus proclaims that freedom in Christ comes not through the kind of independence, but through dependence on him and on his word. Freedom in Christ is not to do as one pleases, but to do what God pleases. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, Jesus says. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Today we celebrate with four of our confirmation students. One of them is sick. Uh, we regret that, but that those things happen. These people have studied God's word, received God's grace in holy baptism and in holy communion. They have learned God's plan for their lives and the love that God has for them. Christ has made them free from sin, from death, and from the devil. And so today we celebrate with you four students the freedom we have in Christ the freedom to serve him and to serve God's people, the freedom to love the Lord with your whole heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, to continue to bless you on this special day and all the days forward. Amen. I present our confirmation class of 2022 who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them from the gifts of your Holy Spirit and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have made brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Confirmation students, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, 
and to confess the faith of the church. Okay, you have your cheat sheet in front of you? You got an all right page? Okay. I ask you, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? Answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If answer, I renounce them. All who are gathered here the day and confirmation students, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue to the covenant God has made you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. There we go. Okay. And you, if so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. people of God and all who gather here today, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Ask God to help and guide us. Confirmation students, you maybe kneel. At this time, I would like to call on parents, sponsors, special guests, whoever you have agreed with to come and stand behind each of the students and let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you gave us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. We'll lay hands on Malcolm. Stir up in Malcolm the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We'll lay hands on Lindsay. Stir up in Lindsay the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen.
Stir up in Nolan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in me the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We'll have the confirmation of students if you stand, and then go on the outs, just, just, like, just like what happened there, so we can get a good look at our confirmation students. Are my batteries good? Yeah, they seem to be, okay. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. And friends and family, all who have gathered here today, um, we are, it's our honor to be here today, my, probably my last confirmation class in my whole career, and this was the best one. No one else will know, right? They, they would, wouldn't know what I say. Great, let, let us uh, give them our appreciation for that. And you all may return to your seat, your pews. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creature. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love in our hearts of your people, and we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations where they are in uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort to those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who have faced illness and surgeries. We pray for Gilbert, Gilbert, Retta Penning, Rolf Olson, Tyler Strook, Gabe Dahlman, Kurt Shelstead, Grant Trigestead, Skip Lahowski, Dana Carmody, Eddie Moan, Donna Larson. Provide comfort and strength to those residing in care centers or are homebound. Arnie Strike, Phyllis Hauk, Ramona Niven, Don Hughesby, Betty Peterson, Marlene Johnson, Marge McFarland, Ken Beyer, Betty Schultz, Lillian Ling, Adele Miller, Margaret Davis, Verona Berg, Eve Larbuck. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation Bless all who are affirming their baptism today. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. Hear us, O God. In God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all of the reformers. Renew and reform as we strive to continue to your word through grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to stand and to greet those around you with the, uh, the peace of Christ.
Please be seated. We'll invite the ashes to wait upon us with the offering. Precious God, in your great love for, will richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, united in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the wilderness of the resurrection, the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and with all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, praise your name and join their unending hymn. Be holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite all those who believe in Jesus and are baptized into his name to share this Holy Supper with us. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please rise for the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. Holy Trinity, the one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our closing hymn, God's Word, is our great heritage.
Go in peace with Christ beside you.